Welcome friends to the Touch Art channel. Today we will get acquainted with the biography and work of the British artist, follower of the Pre-Raphaelites, Evelyn de Morgan. The artist's paintings are permeated with mysticism and symbolism, and in most cases their central images are female figures, which occupy a special place in the artist's work. A lot of interesting things await us ahead, let's go! Evelyn de Morgan is a British artist and follower of the Pre-Raphaelites. Mary Evelyn Pickering was born on August 30, 1855, in London. She was the eldest child of a wealthy aristocratic family. The artist's father, Percival Andre Pickering, was a successful lawyer, and her mother, Anna Maria Wilhelmina, was the sister of the painter John Rodham Spencer Stanhope. Evelyn received an excellent education at home. She studied Greek, Latin, French, German and Italian, classical literature and mythology, and also became acquainted with historical books and scientific texts. Her parents believed that the most important thing for a girl from a good family is to get married successfully, but Evelyn herself had a different opinion on this matter opinions. Since childhood, she dreamed of becoming an artist and began taking drawing lessons at the age of 15. Evelyn, secretly from her parents, studied painting under the guidance of her uncle, who probably introduced her to the work of the Pre-Raphaelites. From the very beginning, she dedicated herself to her craft. On her 17th birthday, she wrote in her diary, Art is eternal, but life is short, I will make up for it now, I have nothing to lose. This diary shows her dedication to her work. She logs hours upon hours of constant work, berating herself for wasting time on mundane tasks such as going to tea and changing clothes. In 1872 she entered the South Kensington National Art School. In 1873, she entered the Slade School of Art in Pointer Studio, where she was one of the first and best female students. She was awarded a prestigious scholarship and received several awards, a prize, and a silver medal for painting from antiquity. In 1875, after graduating from school, Evelyn went with her uncle on a trip to Italy, visiting Rome, Perugia, Assisi, and Florence, where she studied the works of artists of the early Renaissance. She was particularly impressed by the painting of the Florentine school, and first of all, by the work of Sandro Botticelli, whose style and painting manner was reflected in her canvas Flora, 1894. In her work, Evelyn was significantly influenced by the painting of the Pre-Raphaelites, especially Edward Burne-Jones, becoming one of the most talented of his followers. The influence of Burne-Jones on her paintings is undeniable, and at the same time, it carries with it the characteristics of individuality. Her images are more feminine, and her color palette is brighter and more saturated. Morgan also became friends with the Pre-Raphaelite artists Dante Gabriel Rossetti and William Holman Hunt. She was also friends with other key figures in the Victorian literary and artistic world, such as the writer Vernon Lee. The first painting Ariadne on Nakos painted in 1877, upon returning to England and shown at the Dudley Gallery, brought great success to the artist. She was followed by the paintings Night and Sleep, 1878, Venus and Cupid, 1878, Dryad, 1884 to 1885, Mermaids, 1885 to 1886, Dawn, Triumph of Aurora, 1886. They established Evelyn as a master of mythological painting with a strong symbolic overtone. In August 1883, Evelyn met the ceramic artist and decorator William de Morgan, and on March 5, 1887, she married him. The couple lived their lives together in London, visiting Florence in the winter, every year from 1895 until the outbreak of the First World War in 1914. The mild climate of Italy was necessary for William's poor health, and the masterpieces of Renaissance culture were an excellent breeding ground for Evelyn's creativity. The vast majority of de Morgan's works, especially those of the mid-1880s, depict content or themes that can be described as broadly spiritualistic. 
Evelyn, like her husband, showed great interest in spiritualism and the occult sciences, which was reflected in her paintings, filled with secret signs and gravitating toward symbolism. Many of her paintings include sacred and allegorical figures, scenes, and legends, usually containing morals. Together with her husband, the artist developed a painting method using glycerin, which, although quite labor-intensive, produced the bright and rich colors she was looking for. Female images occupy a special place in de Morgan's work. Many of her paintings feature a female figure standing alone or walking. Paintings de Janeiro 1878, Hero holding a torch for Leander 1885, Clisha 1886 to 1887, Helen of Troy 1898, Cassandra 1898. A significant role in these paintings is given to the landscape, which not only creates the necessary mood, but also carries a deep symbolic meaning. The artist's later works, written at the turn of the century, become more complex in composition and symbolism, but at the same time lose the laconicism and clarity that were one of the main advantages of Evelyn de Morgan's work. Among the undoubted successes of this period are Blindness and Greed, Expelling Joy from the City 1897, Dally of Shadows 1899, Storm Spirits 1900, Melody of Autumn 1903, in August 1875, De Morgan sold her first work, Tobias and the Angel. Her first exhibited painting, St. Catherine of Alexandria, was shown at the Dudley Gallery in 1876, along with her other paintings. A year later, De Morgan exhibited his paintings at the first Grosvenor Gallery in London. She exhibited regularly until 1907, including an exhibition at the Wolverhampton Municipal Art Gallery and Museum in which 25 works were shown, including 14 for sale. De Morgan used the profits from the sale of her works to financially support her husband's pottery business, and she actively contributed ideas to his ceramics. The de Morgans finally achieved financial security in 1906 with the publication of William's first novel, Joseph Vance. After 1907, she stopped exhibiting regularly, perhaps due to the successful sale of her husband's first novel, which meant that she was no longer obliged to sell her paintings. Evelyn de Morgan supported the suffrage movement, and she appears as a signer of the declaration in the women's suffrage suffrage of 1889. She was also a pacifist and expressed her horror of the First World War and the Boer War in her paintings. The artist created a series of 13 allegorical paintings inspired by the events of the First World War. In 1916, she held a charity exhibition of these works in her studio in Edith Grove. Donating the proceeds from the sale to the needs of the Red Cross, great interest in the work of Evelyn de Morgan decreased significantly by the first decade of the 20th century. The paintings from her last cycle, deprived of the harmonious integrity of her earlier works, amaze with their figurative power and great inner strength. Among them, Red Cross, Fields of the Killed, SOS. 1916, the same qualities distinguish one of the last paintings by Evelyn de Morgan. The Gilded Cage 1919, devoted, at first glance, to the same theme as the earlier work Prisoner 1907. However, upon closer examination, its metaphorical overtones are striking, allowing it to be perceived as the yearning of the soul, striving to leave the cramped physical shell, Evelyn de Morgan died on May 2, 1919 in London, two years after her husband's death, and was buried in Brookwood Cemetery, near Woking, Surrey. On their tombstone, there is an inscription from the results of the experiment, sadness only comes from the flesh-slash-life of the spirit is joy. De Morgan's work is exhibited at the National Gallery and the Evelyn de Morgan Foundation in London. In October 1991, 16 paintings were destroyed in a fire at the Borough Warehouse. With you were the Touch Art Channel and the work of the British artist Evelyn de Morgan. If you liked the video, don't forget to join our community of lovers of great art. Thank you.